Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. I'm Ola Kunle Kasumo. I hope you've been keeping very safe out there. The COVID numbers are spiking, unfortunately. But um, let's, let's remember uh, the basics. Um, keeping enough distance between us and people, wearing a mask, and most importantly, you know, washing our hands as regularly as possible. Uh, let's, let's stay very safe. And thank you once again for joining us on Channels Book Club. Um, today, we have a professor who is representing other professors um, to introduce this book that they have edited together. It's titled Pivotal Issues in Higher Education Development in Nigeria. Now, this is not the casual, it's not a fictional work. It's a very serious, very academic work, but very important. Um, while going through it, I was, I was just so worried for Nigeria. I was so heartbroken for Nigeria. Nigeria's educational system has been badly hurt. Um, we could have messed up a lot of things, but not education. Unfortunately, we did mess up education. And so um, this book is a compilation of essays written by about 40 contributors, very distinguished people in academia. And uh, it, it ranges from topics from the effect of COVID to um, so funding, so many issues affecting the educational system. But it was written in honor of Professor Peter Okebukola. Let's get to know more about the authors and this book. Pivotal Issues in Higher Education Development in Nigeria is a collection of essays written in honor of Peter Okebukola. He is a professor of science and computer education and director of the World Bank funded Africa Center of Excellence for Innovation and Transformative STEM Education at the Lagos State University in Nigeria. The former Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Universities Commission and the current Chairman of the Council of the National Open University of Nigeria. The book was edited by four scholars. Shola Akiriade is the pioneer provost of the Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria the research and training arm of the ICPC from 2004 till 2020. He is a professor of African Diplomatic History and International Relations at the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife. Shinyo Oyewaiso is a professor of history at Oshun State University. He is currently a visiting professor and executive director, Center for Black Culture and International Understanding in Oshobu, Oshun State. Samuel Odewumi is a professor of transport and environment and dean school of transport and logistics, Lagos State University. While Anthony Kola Ulusonya is presently the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Research and Innovation Partnership, ARIP, at the Ocean State University. He is a Professor of Environmental Sustainability and Education for Sustainable Development. Prof, nice to have you on Channels Book Club. Great to have you here. It's my pleasure. I've been, I've been a member from home all the time, but thank God I'm in Yeah, we're not here today. Great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And um, I mean, great work here. I, when I saw this, I said, only professors. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. Would have, would have done this. Out of the 40 authors, we have uh, 38 professors, two PhD, the rest two are PhD holders of professorial oh. rank, wow. and uh, 15 vice chancellors, and five uh, deputy vice chancellors or head of their own tertiary institution, either a polytechnic or a college of education 
or provost of uh, I mean, so so Nigeria must not joke with this. That is right. I mean, fifteen VCs, vice chancellors, present and past and past present, and present yes, contributed yes, yes. to this. So that is right. Thirty-eight professors, and uh, I mean, with the two, I mean, we have two professors and vice chancellors, one from America, one from Europe, and the one from Brooklyn, which is Galad. Is the, is the head of the, their open university. He was knighted. He was given uh, knights because he's the biggest name in distant learning. Mm. Uh, John Daniel. John Daniel. Sir John Daniel. Mm. So we, we thank all of them for, the, for, for their contribution. And uh, we thank channels uh, for giving us the opportunity to ventilate uh, what is inside. Because it's not just writing, it's like lighting a candle and putting it under the bushel. Mm. It should be useful to know what you do. Mm. And like um, um, Baba Basanjo wrote in his foreword, education is a matter arising. There will be no final word. Mm. We have to push it to the national agenda to create the discourse yeah. around, because these are people from the field, yeah. and so on. Yeah. Me, me, many of them, you, me, we, we talked about them and their, and their contribution. Olu Yede, who has been vice chancellor and now jam registrar. And uh, I mean, Shola Akene and De Labo, all of them, they have, I me, mean, Adamu, they've all been on the field. So we are having the, the, the cream like cream of those who understand the issue of education in the room in this book. And um, we believe that it is something that we continue to debate because many of them not only uh, brought out the problems and challenges, they prefer solutions. Solutions. Mm. Hmm. I, I don't even know. You know, I'm heartbroken when it comes to education in Nigeria. And, and I mean that. I mean, I don't even want to think about it many times because I mean, this is the crux of development. civilization, of development, education. That's true. And, and I, you know, I've told people many times that we could afford to mess everything up in Nigeria, but we could not afford to mess up education, and we did. And it was getting worse. It's not improving. And it has been compounded by COVID now because we are not really, we were, we were badly positioned before, but now... It's exposed. It's, yeah. yeah, that is what I've seen in this book. Pivotal issues in yeah. higher education development in Nigeria. You, you provided a bit of an insight, um, but let, let's, uh, for the sake of somebody who's watching, who's wondering, yeah. this is a collection oh, of yeah. essays yeah. addressing different, different critical issues. issues. Actually, uh, 40 contributions broken into eight sections. Each of these sections addressing different. The first section, because the book uh, is uh, about Professor Kebukola uh, pulling out of academic, and all his life it has been about tertiary education. So what are these issues? The first section is a tribute to him and uh, his trajectory through life, uh, done by Professor U.S. So then his academic trajectory, uh, I'd say by Tony. That was an unpleasant job to do. Uh, okay. Writing about his uh, academic work is not something you want to pick uh, to do. So then after that, we went to section two, which is about cross-cutting issues. That's where you have Professor Loyede on the cacophony in cacophony, education. Yeah. Yes, uh, education that, that, that issues. An and so, so many other chapters in that Check, uh, section three is about Okebukola and all his dimensions in education. Okay, quality assurance, um, corruption, anti-corruption, that is sorting and the grill mills, I was able to close them down. Uh, his initiatives at National University of Education, he introduced about 100 innovations as executive secretary. 60 of those innovations were for the general university system, whereas 40 is for NUC itself. Now, so we now examine where are, what is the status of those innovations now? You know, uh, Oga go, Oga come. Uh, people come and go. What happens to innovations and sustainability in, in tertiary, sorry, in the, in the education industry, but generally in administration in Nigeria? Then, of course, the section four is on the COVID. 
the because COVID it, impact it, it, yes, on it, education. It came suddenly. So people have solutions and the way to go. Like a Professor Akunia Ade asked, we are taking, asking, when will the school open? But we have not asked, how will learning continue? Will learning so continue? you may open school like we did in Lasso, as I mentioned, we have to close down again because COVID did not allow. COVID. So the question is not just only when will the school reopen? How will we continue learning? So that is uh, on COVID. Then on section um, five, that's quality assurance. Look, even when we now introduce uh, um, uh, online learning or whatever, how do you quality assure? Uh, one interesting example, we did the MBA exam first time as a pilot for subjective exam, where they have to write, not just CB, not just answer I mean, multiple questions, they write. So one of the rules we set was that people should put on their camera when they are answering the exam. So they turn off the, many people turn off the, they some of the, the cameras. Turn, yeah, in order to do their, uh, okay. their thing. All those things are the quality assurance and regulations we have to bring to bear. Then of course, on item six, section six is on gender equity and access. I mean, that is a whole fister, and people wrote extensively. On seven, there is the issue of private universities and specialized universities. Yeah. So what is their status? You have professors who are not writing. Sponsorship, sustainability. Yeah, that that is, is it. So many then the issue of, uh, I mean, for a uh, senior US, or he wrote, he broke them into four. Uh, a Greek specialized universities, tech specialized, medical specialized, and education specialized. Where are they? How are they doing? The raison d'etat for which you establish them, are they fulfilling them? And if I may answer the question, if you ask me, they are not. The answer is no. They, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are not bringing <sighs> anything unique to the table. Then, of course, the last one, um, funding and governance. Funding. Money says, if I'm not at home, nobody should have ideas. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> so have ideas. that is the section eight. So mm -hmm. those are the areas covered. And yeah. uh, if you check it, if I continue to roll out the names, we may pick them, the, the sections yeah, one by one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Prof, Prof, now, very quickly, you know, um, I, it, it did, of course, of cross my mind that Professor Peter okay, Bukola, Bukola, because this book was written to honor him. Yes, it's, it's, it's yeah. pull out, as we say. As I, we say I, in I, I, yeah, I have to admit that I, I only knew him from afar. Mm. Um, um, I met him once or twice, but I mean, it was casually, and he probably wouldn't remember me, <laughs> mm. you know, a long time ago. But um, I only knew him from afar. But this book properly introduces sure. his legacy. Sure. And I was sure. wowed. I said, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't know all this before. And to have brought together these 40 contributors, you know, says a lot. About who he about, is. Yeah, what he's been able to achieve. Honestly, Professor Kibukola is, Baba uh, Obasanjo uh, calls him four man, figuratively. And if you check Professor Ninumi Bigri's uh, first article on him, that is what he said. And if you stayed with him, he's a rare human being in terms of work ethics, schedule, timeliness. Is 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 is. I've been close to him, and all the people that wrote about a uh, tribute to him, whites, black, women, female, on the, on the initial page of the tribute, they will attest to the fact that, you see, the problem in this country is that we are so well endowed, but our endowment are hidden, they are not utilized. Mm. Mm. They are not utilized. I, I, whenever I look at him, I say, so this is how this man we, because anything he touches as far as education, in UNESCO, he stop. In uh, Guni, is the president that is, I mean, a network of universities in Africa. He, is, 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 and he has won UNESCO Prize Award about almost 30 years ago in the communicating science education. So, but you see, just as you have one, one or two people misbehaving, uh, you have people who are Thoroughly, and I mean, if, if people read the, the commentary, because why it is especially so is that it's not in the system where you can do anything to anybody. 
Yeah. So if it is just that it's been made a, an executive secretary, National University Commission, you will say, hey, people are looking for favors. But he is, it is on his way out that we said, let us do this. And if people, me, the professors have mentioned Galad, uh, Alendro, uh, John, Sir John Daniel, and Aolo um, Yede can create time to write. And immediately past Vice Chancellor of, Larry Fagbon of Lagos State University, in fact, Larry said that is a fact. He, 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 he shot himself out for about just, a week just to write. Just to write. <laughs> Interesting. So he, he, he's, um, he's, it, he's it, a it, great. It's, it's he's great a, to have such, such honestly, a testimony. and for education, yeah. Yeah. he is um, uh, almost number one. I mean, I stand to be corrected because you no know, education we always debate. Yeah. He, he, he stands tall. In, in the firmament of education globally. Uh, let, let me pick one or two issues here. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, out of so many, many, many yeah. issues. Yeah. COVID, from the contributions here, COVID-19 exposed some major flaws in Nigeria's educational system. One of them is an over-dependence on the traditional system of learning. Yeah, so, so um, reading the essays here, I was running through my head. I said, hey, we are in trouble. Big one. Are, are, are we not? Big trouble in the sense that um, we were hit, although the entire world was not expecting COVID, that's to be honest. Mm -hmm. But because of our weak positioning as it comes to education, we were just not prepared for this. Now, but you see, for every problem, it, there is an advantage that we are now working on. That every, for example, University of Shun State University did a matric convocation exam online. Lasso is doing the same thing. It is now time for the, you say, challenge for the academics in Nigeria. And that is the only thing. Because our job is not to lament the situation. That's the challenge out there. That, that is why the book let people read section on COVID and all solutions, because not just that, these are theoretical solutions. Labo Poku Olai is the vice chancellor of Osun State University that has completed a session. I mean, we have completed a session in last week. Prescribe, this is the way to go. It is going to be hybrid. There is no time. Uh, John Daniel, the head of distant learning in UK, said there are three scenarios. One, this thing will come and go. To COVID. It, it, COVID. It, yes, uh, COVID will come and go, uh, so we'll be happy ever after. Second, it will not come and go. It will dovetail up to the end of 2021 because it will come in waves. Then, lastly, it will, it will be with us in one form or the other. And that is the one we should prepare for. That is the third scenario, that this thing may not go. It may not disappear. Even if it disappears, I remember when Ebola came, Obama said, Look, let us uh, prepare because there is another virus down the road. I mean, Viruses have always been imagined over time. Yeah. They, are, they, are, they are our sparring partner. I mean, they, they, they continue to, as human beings are evolving, they are evolving and they cross the border from animal to man to cause us serious distress. And nothing can prevent that interaction over time down the road. So we will be having this. How prepare are we? So learning in tertiary institution now, and that is the prescription. I mean, it's not just where we are coming from, we are badly positioned, but what you do now, training of the teachers for the new day, the new rules, the, the music has changed. The dance step must change. Like Baba said, that is about enjoying the forward. There is no final word in no education. Final word. It's an ongoing discussion. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, sir. Y yes, Thank sir. You. It's my pleasure. Our leaders who are in charge, please and please and please, let's give education the highest priority. Education is just too important. If Nigeria will become a great country. If this country will become um, the country we all dream of, then education has to be taken very seriously. And it's not just f the formal, the traditional formal education of schools. There are so many angles to education that are very important. I mean, um, institutions, for example, that preserve Nigerian history, um, institutions like the museums, and the National Library, and so many other institutions, like they are very important. You go to uh, many countries outside, outside the country, uh, outside of here, and you see a lot of students going to visit 
a, a, a national monument, going to visit um, a museum, for example, or a, a library or some institution that preserves history, and you see them with their notes, taking notes. Uh, I've, been, I've encountered a few students like that, and I asked them, what are you guys doing here? And they said, oh, it's, this is part of our program in school, and um, if we don't do this well, we don't, we don't score enough. You know, it's so amazing. So education is holistic, not just the schools, not just where students go to study and all that, but also the entire society has to be built in such a way as to encourage learning and knowledge and, and information and education. So let, let's, let's build a great country, and the foundation for that is good education. So uh, up next is a reading. Um, please stay tuned and enjoy this. My name is Mishak Ilobi, and I'm from Nkwele Zunaka in Anambra State. I was born in Sabon Geriz area to Southern parents. And my first 10 years were spent up there. I wrote this book, Living Between Worlds, as my autobiography, capturing the different phases of my life journey thus far. Let me read to you from page eight of this book, speaking to my early days in Zaria. I bent over to resume my search for my shoe when I eventually heard the nearby roar of a train. And suddenly, the woman's antics in the rain made sense. I immediately jumped out of the railway tracks and into her waiting arms, just in time for the train to roar past with its horn blaring, shivering in fright and shock. I cried into the hands and bosom of the stranger as she cuddled me and wept in sheer relief. She took me to her stall and offered me a bean cake that she was selling by the roadside. That house a woman saved my life. Me, the TCK, the third culture kid, and with that action permanently erased from my heart the us versus them mentality. To this day, whenever anyone speaks in a derogatory manner about those houses, to my hearing, the image of that house mother springs to mind. In those moments, I confirm to myself that I am one with the houses and with any other Nigerian tribe. I refuse to see them as the others because at heart, I identify with that Hausa woman who on that day substituted as my mother groaning in the rain to see me safely delivered to her. For some years now on this show, we've had a national essay competition, book review essay competition um, uh, for senior secondary school students. We've always taken the winners to an international event. Um, we've gone to the Frankfurt Book Fair, we've gone to the Sharjah International Book Fair, we've gone to the Bochacon Conference, um, different cities around the world. And it's usually a very great experience for the winners. Last year, we started this competition again for the year um, 2020. Um, with the hope that the winners will be taken to um, New York in the middle of the year. But unfortunately, you all know, we all know what happened last year. Nobody expected COVID-19. It struck everybody really hard. And we were forced 
to suspend the competition. We've had a lot of inquiries, rather, um, students calling in, what is going on, um, has it been cancelled, and so on. No, it has not been cancelled, but we've, we've been forced you know, to change, change direction. So look out on this show, as from the next episode, we'll be updating you on that competition that we started last year. Um, we will eventually pick the winners for that competition, but we'll have to go in a new direction um, this year. So watch out next episode for an update on the Channel's Book Club Prize for Literature. I'm sure those of you who have been expecting, been excited about getting this update, uh, we'll be looking forward to that. This is where we have to end the show today, as always. We'll be delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.